Do you mean like, this is 2023 paper one. It was written this year by grade 12, 12 studies. And let me just go straight to it. We need to answer all these questions here. I'll start with question one, which is all about the statement of comprehensive income and current assets. We are required to choose a description from column B that matches the term in column A. Write only the letter A to E next to the question number, which is 1.1 up to 1.1.4 in the answer book. The first one, which is 1.1.1, the term is independent auditor. An independent auditor is an external auditor that comes to check if the company's financial statements are accurate. And because they are independent and they're external, they don't work for the company, they get paid audit fees, whatever opinion they express will be unbiased. And for that one, our answer will be E. Basically for 1.1.1, the answer will be E, right? Capital employed. Capital employed is simply how we finance our company. We finance our company using by using capital, which we raise by issuing shares or using unused profits, which is what we call retained income. And for 1.1.2, your answer should be D. The current liability is a debt we expect to settle within 12 months. So for 1.1.3, your answer will be B. And the financial assets, obviously, it's, um, it's basically an investment such as fixed deposit over a three-year period. So even when you bought shares in another company, understand we are buying shares in another company. We are a company and we are allowed to buy shares in another company because as a company, we are regarded as a juristic person. So we can invest in other companies. So when we invest in other companies, that will also fall under financial assets. Now you realize that the only thing that was not meshed here will be C, a staff member of a company who sets up effective internal control procedures. That is an internal auditor. Now, moving to 1.2.1, we need to refer to information B, Roman V1, where we will be required to calculate the value of closing stock of light bulbs on the 28th of February 2023 using the weighted average method. I will first start by looking at my pre adjustment trial balance and specifically look for trading stock. Trading stock, according to the pre-adjustment trial balance, is sitting at 2,969,800, okay? And um, let me just continue, and I don't see anything that affects trading stock except for this adjustment, which is in Roman figure one which says that a physical stock count on the 28th of February, 2023, revealed 2,774,800 stock on hand. Good. However, this figure excludes, um, excludes closing stock figure for light bulbs, which they specified. Note that the weighted average method is used to value the light bulbs. Hmm. Now, We've got opening stock. Note that the 1st of March, 2022 will be the beginning of the year and the 28th of February, 2023 will be the end of the year. 
we've got 416,000 as open in stock. The number of units will be 8,000. Purchases will be 3,478,000. The number of units will be 47,000. And units available for sale will be 55. That 55 is actually 8,000 plus 47. And obviously the cost will be the opening plus your purchases. They didn't say anything about returns. Remember, um, when you calculate stock available for sale, you will normally take opening plus purchases minus returns or any losses or damages of which it has not been specified. And this is the only adjustment I see here. So this is it. And then they gave us coverage on purchases, which is 27500 And stock on the 28th of February will be 1700 Now, if they don't give you closing stock, they will tell you how many units were sold. So you will take units available for sale minus the ones that were sold to get the closing. But here, it's done for you there. You have the closing value. You just need the price of this value, of which we can calculate either using weighted average method or using first out, first in, first out method. Here we are required to use the weighted average method. If you have been checking out my videos, you will have noticed the formula that I use to calculate weighted average method, which is balance at the beginning of the year plus your purchases minus your returns plus any other cost like your courage or custom duty. Then you divide by number of units at the beginning of the year, balance of units at the beginning of the year, and purchases in units minus returns in units. That's all you're going to have in the denominator. Now, in the numerator, it is the value in rents. In the denominator, it is the units the number of units. Now, the opening value amounted to 416,000 or 4,416,000. And our purchases amounted to 3,478,000. And then we add our courage on purchases. The number of units opening, it was 8,000 plus 47,000. They didn't say anything about return, so we don't subtract them. Please note that when you take your opening plus purchases minus returns, those are simply units available for sale, right? So instead of having that 416,000 plus 3,478,000, you could have just used the number of units available for sale. Let's say the number of units available for sale were less than the sum of those two. Then you will know that the difference was going to be your returns. And now they will have to tell you how many units were returned. So here, the error was not specified, so there were no returns. Now, when you calculate your average cost, this is average cost per unit. And that will be 71,000, I mean, 71 rand and 30 cents. And we'll just use that to calculate the value of our closing stock by multiplying it by the number of units of closing stock. And that will give us 121,210. That 121,210, you will take it to your inventory note. Okay, in your inventory note, you have the value of your closing stock, which was 2,774,000. The only thing that was missing there was 121,210, which relates to light bulbs. And that will give you the value of your closing stock. You take the number of units counted and you put them in the, under inventories. So if you've been checking all my adjustments and all my videos, you should know this by now. Please check under podcast because that's where I have grouped the videos according to a specific topic or according to a specific question paper. Don't look at them from the video side. Just go to podcast or playlist. That's where I've grouped everything together. And when you go to podcast, it will be like a movie because it's from scene one to the last scene. So basically, I explain every adjustment from the beginning to the end until it is combined. And then you can start doing your past papers, okay? It's a crime to actually fail accounting after watching all the videos that I have posted. You deserve to be arrested, as a matter of fact. Now, this 2,895,210, I am going to compare it to my trading stock that is in the trial balance. And in the trial balance, let me check how much my trading stock is sitting at. My trading stock in the trial balance is sitting at 
2,969,800, meaning that it is more than what we counted. So the difference, we are going to record it as trading stock deficit under operating expenses. And since that is your trading stock deficit, you will put it under operating expenses and you will write it there as trading stock deficit. And the deficit will be 74,590. And that will be it with respect to inventory. And I uh, will just leave it here for now. And then upcoming video we will talk more about um, everything else basically we'll just complete everything else from 1.2.2 to 1.2.3 be on the lookout for the next video please don't forget to subscribe like and comment if you have any suggestion thank you thank you for watching